uniform motion. Uniform motion refers to an object traveling with constant velocity. Uh, remember that velocity is a vector, which means that it has size and direction. So to classify as a uniform motion, an object not only needs to be going with a consistent speed, but it also needs to be traveling in a, in a straight line or in a, in a uh, single direction. We can imagine here that if uh, we had some object with a constant speed of 5 meters per second east, that we could use a table to track its, speed, its position. And if we went from 1 to, actually let's start at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then let's just put it at position 0 to start. And then after one second, it would be up to position 5. And then it would go another 5 meters in the second. Um, in the second uh, second, so it would get up to 10. And then in the third second, another 5. So 10 plus another 5 is 15. And the fourth second would be up to 20. When we create this equation, V equals delta D over T. This is, uh, we've sort of been talking about it as an average velocity. But if we're dealing with uniform motion, then this equation can be used not just for average, but also for instantaneous. Uh, another way that we could represent this overall situation is by using a graph. If we imagine the graph that I just uh, talked about here. This is our time in seconds. This is our position in meters. And because we're dealing with the object moving east, we'll make it meters east. And what we said here was that we had, let's call that time one, two, three, four. Every time um, we went by a second, we went uh, five meters further, five, 10, 15, 20. And so what we get, hopefully, and this isn't going to be perfect, obviously I'm drawing this just sort of freehand, but what we get is a straight line. Here we have a delta D, or a change in position, and here we have a time. And if we take our, um, if we take our slope, which would be our rise over run, then our rise over run would be our delta D over our T, and we can make that a vector. That could be a vector because I put direction here, then that would be our speed. So what we can see is that the rate of change, which is another word for slope, here is the velocity. And so we get a straight line because we have a constant velocity. which really means a constant slope. And all of this is really because we put the stipulation at the beginning of this that we're talking about uniform motion. So let's just look at a few different things and see how that would affect the uh, overall slope. Let's just pretend we have one graph here, and we're going to put all of the these motions on the same graph. Switch over to black pen for my axes, so that I can use different colors for my different objects in the motion. Now 
Most of my objects here are moving east, so I'm going to put my position in terms of the direction east, and my time will be in seconds. So if I want to start with my 5 meter per second object, because that's what I've been talking about in the previous example. Uh, hold on a second, I'm just going to give myself some common times to work with. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a little bit of forethought, I know I'm going to end up with close to 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And I know that this isn't a perfect scale or anything like that, but I'm, you know, drawing freehand, so it's, you should still be able to see the idea. So for the 5 meter per second object, every time I go over 1 second, I go up 5. So I go from 5, that should be 10. And then at 3, I should be at 15. And 4, I should be at 20. So that's 0 plus 5, 5 plus 5, 10 plus 5, 15 plus 5. And I've done all that. That's what I included in this chart at the beginning. Now let's do the um, 10 meter per second object. What that means then is that I'm going to go 10 meters in one second. So if I go over one second, I go up to 10 meters. Over two seconds, up to 20 meters. Over three seconds, 10, 20 plus another 10 is 30. Or over four, I go up to 40. I can do these by imagining a rise, or a run and a rise, where I have a run of one and a rise of 10, and that gets me my 10 uh, 10 meters in one second, or I could imagine using the formula V equals delta D over T, or I could really imagine doing this in a variety of ways. But what's important here is that I still, with my constant velocity, get a straight line, but there's a significant difference between these two lines. Um, the slower object only going five meters in a second gets a uh, gets a lower or a flatter slope. Alternatively, the faster object gets a higher or a bigger slope. Now I wonder if you can imagine what's going to happen with the um, I'm going to try blue, see how that looks, with the two meters per second west. Let's remember that what two meters per second west uh, means, since I've declared east as my positive direction, is negative two meters per second. And so that means every time I go over one second, I go down two meters. See, here's my one and here's my two down. And um, I could imagine that I would be down here and then down here and down here. And I need uh, really to make this remotely proper, I guess I should add a negative section to this axis. My negative 10 is down here. And what I see here is that my negative slope means that when I do my rise over my run, I'm still going to treat my run as positive, so that means my rise must be negative. Or every time I step over, instead of going east a couple meters, I'm going to end up going in the negative east direction, which turns out to be west. This line follows the same rule that I, in, that I talked about up here, where the actual steepness of the slope is still related to the overall speed of the object. That's the slowest one, that's why it's the shallowest line. But we can also recognize that the sawing or the direction of the motion can be represented by the sign or direction of the slope here.